Web 3.0 undoubtedly has massive potential to change the internet as we know it. We've already seen a number of Web 3.0 applications find you know product market fit and meaningful adoption. And I believe that we're just scratching the surface for what's possible on this new exciting frontier. And in this video, I want to talk about what's next for Web 3.0 and what you need to understand if you want to stay two steps ahead of this space. I'm going to talk about that as a blockchain developer who works this technology on a daily basis. So before we get into that, you know, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory. And on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to know how to master blockchain step by step start to finish, then head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so let's talk about what's next for Web 3.0. But before we do that, let's just pause and define it because I know this is a hot buzzword and you're not always sure like what it means. So you can think about Web 3.0 as the next wave of the internet. So we started with Web 1.0, it's mostly just like static websites and email. Web 2.0 being interactive websites, things like social networks, you know, mobile applications that actually talk to the internet, the cloud, all that type of stuff. And Web 3.0 is the next wave. So basically, this is an internet that uh, it creates an internet of value where you can actually own things digitally that this is enabled by an internet of blockchains. And it has lots of different benefits like censorship resistance, transparency and trustlessness. And one of the big benefits of this is it completely reinvents the business model of the internet. So basically, the business model of Web 2.0 is that you are in many cases, getting something for free in exchange for information about you that can be sold to advertisers or just like showing ads to you in exchange for using a free product. And in these cases, basically, somebody's just making money off of you for using something for free. But Web 3.0 changes this where the participants of the you know applications can actually you know, benefit sometimes directly monetarily and even get ownership over the thing that they're using themselves. So what are some Web 3.0 applications that exist today? Well, a really basic one is cryptocurrency. I mean, this technically is Web 3.0. It's censorship resistant money. It's trustless. It's transparent. It runs on a blockchain and people who participate in running the network are financially rewarded for mining blocks, validating transactions. And the more people that enter the network, the value of those cryptocurrencies increase and that, that benefits the holders. Same is basically true for NFTs and also decentralized finance or DeFi. So this is what we have with Web 3.0, but what's next, okay? Well, again, you know, Web 3.0 really has the potential to change the internet as we know it, and we're already starting to see, you know, existing things like social media be reinvented in a Web 3.0 paradigm to exist on this new open internet to particularly, you know, embody the values of, you know, decentralization and transparency. And so that's already starting to happen, but what do I think is even beyond that? Like, what's next? Well, it's two things. One is creating things that we don't even know about yet, you know, that are going to exist in Web 3.0 that are only made possible with Web 3.0. We already have that with DeFi. You know, in many cases, you know, people are just taking traditional financial applications like savings, lending, and trading and moving them over to the blockchain. But you have things in DeFi like flash loans, for example, that you can't really do anywhere else. And so I definitely think that's true in Web 3.0. And I think that we'll likely see some of those types of things come out in 2022 and beyond that we just don't know about yet. It's, it's really hard to know exactly what's going to happen in this space. But if you want a more concrete set of use cases to look out for, then I would say basically anything that hasn't really been moved over yet from the Web 2.0 paradigm and reinvented to align, you know, more with Web 3.0 values like censorship resistance, trustless transparency, community ownership, then that to me is the biggest low hanging fruit that's likely going to move over next in this great, you know, Web 3.0 Maybe not migration, but expansion. And so there's lots of things that this could apply to. But right now, I want to actually give you a concrete, specific example and break down exactly how this would happen. So I pulled this tweet thread here from Chris Dixon saying messaging services, whether Twitter like or Discord like should be built on top of open protocols the way email is. So I want to unpack this and actually talk about, you know, how this could work with the Web 3.0 paradigm, because this is exactly what I'm talking about, basically taking things we already know and use today and just changing how they work to be more in line with the incentives of the users. So uh, if you're not email works now, you know, it, it is a protocol that's out there on the web. Basically, if you want to build an email client that, that sends emails, uh, many cases, you're basically just interacting with the basic uh, SMTP protocols, which stands for simple mail transfer protocol. You can see in the Wikipedia article here, I'm going to get all the crazy technical details of how it works. But basically, you know, as you know, the internet, uh, grew, um, you know, there's this race to become the leader for these protocol standards, because in the day, nobody wants to build an email client that has a different, a bazillion different, you know, protocols. It's in everybody's best interest to coalesce around like one, two, maybe different standards. And we can start to see that happen, you know, in the future with Web 3.0. We already see it for cryptocurrencies. We have the ERC-20 standard for Ethereum-based tokens. 
got the ERC 721 standard for NFTs. And this could be applied to, you know, other things like messaging or social media Twitter. So I want to read through this tweet thread and actually unpack it a little more. He's saying, but how do people make money? So hundreds of billions of dollars and businesses have been built on top of SMTP and of course, ATTP. That's what you use whenever you just visit a website in your browser. So some objections like what about spam and other bad things? So as with SMTP and HTTP, we have a legal system plus providers, Gmail, etc. that can filter out but are constrained from turning evil because of user switching costs. So basically, it's not that hard for you to just change your email address from Gmail to Yahoo. And you know, but this didn't work in your blank, blank, blank. And it's saying, yeah, but that's true of almost every tech idea that eventually works. Okay, I've said that some on this channel recently, basically, sometimes, you know, IDs aren't wrong. They're just early. And that could be true of some of these types of things that we're seeing come out that, you know, maybe we're just getting to the point where this can now work with Web 3.0, which I think is totally true because a lot of this stuff, you know, in Web 3.0 really won't work until blockchains are ultimately scalable. And we're starting to really ramp up the race for that, right? We have a ton of competing layer ones out there, smart contract platforms trying to create fast, scalable blockchains. We have Ethereum layer twos really starting to gain quite a bit of adoption to make Ethereum much more scalable to build this open internet that can actually make a lot of these Web 3.0 use cases possible that really wouldn't be possible if you were just trying to make transactions on layer one Ethereum be cost prohibitive. You wouldn't be able to, you know, handle the load of enough users actually trying to, you know, do transactions at the same time. And so what would this ultimately give way to? It would give way to new products, things like he's talking about here, like Twitter, maybe Discord, maybe other protocols like that we use on a day to day basis, especially if you're in crypto and changing them to where they are web 3.0. Okay, so you know, these protocols will be open decentralized, essentially, like if you're sending messages around, there's a community that's actually governing the thing that's facilitating this transfer. And so how would users benefit from this? Well, if you are someone who maintains this protocol, then there's probably gonna be some financial incentive for you to do that. And so how exactly do the financial incentives work for the end users? Well, it's not 100% clear right now. And that's exactly what he's saying. Um, you know, with the reply here, how people make money. He's saying hundreds of billions of dollars of businesses have been built on top of SFTP and of course, HTTP. So there are, of course, some things that are unsolved about this that aren't 100% clear on the surface. But here's where the incentives come into play, okay? And that's like why you want to do this in the first place. There's a massive incentive for pretty much anybody to take anything Web 2.0 and try, try to move it to Web 3.0. I don't think everything's going to work. Not everything's going to stick. I don't see you know the web 2.0 to web 3.0 uh evolution as being a migration it's an expansion not everything's going to work from web 2.0 to web 3.0 but it's going to expand the value of the internet and change it just like we didn't throw websites into the trash whenever we started having mobile apps on our phone and so there's a massive incentive to do this lots of people are going to try because there's a huge financial upside to do this to try to create a protocol that's decentralized to launch a cryptocurrency that's associated with this particularly around things that have utility because in many cases, you know, people want to launch cryptocurrencies that are on the lower end of the uh, queue for regulators to try to, you know, regulate them. We're seeing lots of, you know, information about regulators, you know, potentially looking favorably upon utility tokens versus things like stable coins or straight up securities. So there's a massive financial upside to do this. And I think we're going to see lots of people jump in and try this. And so if we can actually do this and crack this, then that's going to prove the business model and you're going to see lots of other things come in and try to, you know, capture some of that market share and could be a huge tipping point for just Web3 in general to pour gasoline on this expansion that I'm talking about. And of course, there are unknowns, like I was saying before, but there's a ton of capital and bright minds in the crypto space that lots of people are going to try to take a stab at this. And if you're watching this video and you want a free idea, something to try out for yourself, well, then there you go. So that's all I got for today. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out so the more people can learn about blockchain. And if you're as fascinated with the technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? Well, you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find any of my free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you want to take the next step, or hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely, I can show you become a blockchain master step-by-step start to finish over at dappydiversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. And until next time, thanks for watching DAP University.